wanted to, to, to pull back to the reading brain. You talked about English, you talked about Arabic, you talked about Vietnamese. What I was interested to actually learn about in my own research from an educator is that each of these languages, some of them have certain similar features and some of them don't. So perhaps from an educator perspective, what, what is different or similar about certain features of languages and why would that be important for the classroom? Yeah, so as we look, um, you know, uh, first of all, the foundation of reading is language. And if we look at language, um, no matter where you live in the world, uh, children uh, are exposed, uh, humans are meant to speak, children are exposed to language, and there's certain kind of developmental milestones, would you say, that are pretty universal, that young children begin to talk, they begin to say their first words by you know, one year and put two words together. And we have to be mindful of that because as your language develops, these are the precursors to reading because reading is language based. And we talked about language being a natural process, humans being able, you know, to communicate orally, right? And then we talk about reading as not being such a natural process, right? But reading is language based, And so that's why it's so important to have strong language skills to support those strong literacy skills, to get to strong literacy skills. And as we develop those strong literacy skills, what I want to say about that is then that supports, you know, really that development of academic, further academic language. So your literacy can support your language and your language can support your literacy skills. And so as we look at that and we think about the brain, there are certain centers in the brain primarily in that left hemisphere hemisphere that are responsible for us to, you know, take in the language for us to understand what we're listening to and for us to express ourselves, you know? And when we look at reading, we see some of those same centers activated, especially when we look at alphabetic languages. Now, languages that are more pictographic, right? We see that, oh, you know, these pictographic languages, oh, there's some activation, uh, not only in the left, but we see some activation in the right for really, you know, because uh, a lot of those were, de- you know, depending on a lot of visual uh, translating that picture, right, uh, to uh, meaningful um, units of uh, language. And so, but no matter what, We still, even in those languages that are pictographic, it's still necessary for individuals to be able to process the sounds. We call that ability the phonological processing. And if we're thinking about how it applies to reading, that applies to your phonological awareness. We have to transcribe that print that's on the page, whether that be in an alphabetic alphabetic or more logo graphic, right? And we have to apply meaning to it. And what happens, for example, for students that might have a reading disability, um, such as dyslexia, they may have difficulty in that phonological component of the language, which then affects their ability to read that print and, uh, and be able to write and spell. Yeah, 